Multiplying by tens has a really great pattern to it. One of the most basic is that if you take any number and multiply it by ten, it's kind of like thinking about having that number and a zero. So one times ten is, well, ten. That's one ten. And two times ten is two tens, or ten plus ten, and that's twenty. And then three times ten is like three tens, or ten, 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 and that's thirty. Now you might see the pattern here. In the first case, we had the number 1 times 10, and we got 1, 0. 2 times 10 is 2, 0. 3 times 10 is 3, 0. Now if we have 4 times 10, we get 4, 0. And you notice again, here we have our 4 right here. And then a 4 again, 4, 0. And then we keep going. 5 times 10 is just... 5, 0, or 50. 6 times 10 is 6, 0, or 60. And this will go on indefinitely, really. 7 times 10 is 70, and 8 times 10 is 80. And 9 times 10 is 90. So 10 times 10 follows this pattern. Um, the difference being that here we have 10 times 10, so going back here, 9 times 10 was 9, 0. So now it's just 10 and another 0. And we can continue until we get to, let's say, 100 times 10. Well, 100 times 10 is just, well, we're going to have one more 0. So 100 times 10 is 1, 0, 0, and then 0. So the number 100 is still in there. There's the 100. Only we're adding one more zero. So multiplying by tens has this great property, and that's because our numbers, the ones numbers that we use, are called base ten. So you might not have ever noticed this, but the first digits where we have one through nine, and then we get this number ten. Well, ten is kind of like saying one ten and then zero ones, and a hundred. Well, that's kind of like having one hundred zero tens and zero ones and then a thousand is kind of like having well sorry is having one thousand and then zero hundreds zero tens and zero ones and this is really nice because it tells us that every time you move up another place value you're multiplying by ten because ten times ten is a hundred and a hundred times ten is a thousand and so forth this is how our number system is designed to use this property of 10. And it works for all kinds of nasty numbers. Um, let's say we had 55 times 10, or oops, 516 times 10. Well, really what's happening when you multiply it by 10, in this case we get 550, or 55 and a zero. What's happening is this number is making becoming 10 times larger so everything will move over one place. So it was 55, and then it becomes 550. This 55 moved over to the left a little bit, exactly one place. So it became 10 times bigger. So 516 would just be 5,160. We put a comma every three places to help us. And that zero goes right in there. So it's 5,160. And now, if you get lost in place value, um, place value is very important. But to help you say your idea, you could always just say the 5160 as a shortcut. So when you multiply by 10, it adds a zero to our number. Um, the exception being, I guess, decimals. Now, this is not really different. We just might see it a little differently. So 216.32. Well, everything becomes 10 times bigger when you multiply by 10. So now we have a decimal point to deal with. Well, let's go back to our example of 55 times 10. Well, 55 times 10, um, well, let's rewrite that with a decimal. So 55.0. That's like saying 55 and then nothing else. So it's still 55. We're going to multiply that by 10. Well, we're still going to get the same thing, 550. But here, let's keep track of what happened to the decimal point. It was here, we multiplied by 10, and now it becomes 550.0. So the decimal point kind of moved from here to here. So now, in this case, when you multiply by 10, you really, people will say this, 
we're actually moving the decimal point one place to the right. So in this case, it becomes 2163.2. So multiply by 10, you can think of it as adding a zero or making a number 10 times bigger, so it'll move the decimal point one place to the right.